say a big thank you to all of you and a big thank you to Paul the Vicar and to Stuart. Very briefly, first of all, a big thank you to Shirley for all the work she put in through Defend Whittington Coalition. And to everyone else for their work on the Whittington. And I'm just thinking of all the demonstrations and all the meetings I've been to over the years to do with the Whittington Hospital. Uh, anything I say is said on the basis that I live in this community, we live in this community, and I strongly support our local hospital. And I've got utmost respect for all those that work in that hospital and provide such a fantastic service for all of our community. So big thank you to all of the staff at the Whittington Hospital. The NHS came about because people had a vision of a civilised society where healthcare was a right, not a privilege. Where healthcare was provided, not on the basis of your bank balance, but on the basis of your needs. We won that argument. We won that debate. The historic National Health Act of 1947-48 brought that about. And Nye Bevan was quite right when he said we have to be around to defend it. That's why we're all here tonight, because we want to live in that civilised society where healthcare is available free at the point of use for everybody. But there are vultures around in the NHS. There have always been the private health interests that have always sought to undermine the NHS and turn it into a health service of last resort. Frank Dobson was, I think, one of the best health secretaries we had because he made the link between poverty and ill health. He tried to push investment into the poorer inner city areas rather than the wealthier areas and make that link of industrial illnesses, of environmental pollution and poverty that lead so much to ill health. Therefore, the responsibility of the National Health Service and local government for all the comprehensive health services is very, very important indeed. And I recognise the work of social services and environmental services along with the National Health Service itself. But think of a few facts. Our borough, our, our borough plus Harrogate plus Camden have had a very big increase in population. Look at the census returns. We also have the worst figures on suicides, health, uh, ill health through heart conditions, through HIV AIDS, through suicide, mental illness, and a whole lot of other factors. And sadly, we also have very high levels of smoking and obesity in our borough. I praise the councils that do their best to encourage people to lead healthy lives. I'm appalled at the benefit cuts which will make people lead unhealthy lives in the future. But I am very angry that I had to read about the changes to Whittington Healthcare in the local papers and by Facebook and Twitter and was not told about them by the hospital. The hospital has since apologised to a meeting of MPs about this. An apology is welcome, but a change of heart would be even more welcome. And that was what tonight's meeting is about. So, my concerns, there's lots of them, there isn't time to give you all of them, are simply this. One, if you reduce the number of beds in the Whittington to 177, and that is what is in the plan, that's roughly the halving of the Whittington Hospital over a very short period of time, I ask the question, what then happens if we have a winter again like last winter when the hospital was running at 95% occupancy, how viable is an A&E department if the hospital behind it is completely full? Because clearly if people come into A&E, hopefully they're treated very quickly and can go home if it's not too serious, but many have to be taken in. I ask a question, which I think any rational, normal, intelligent person would ask. Secondly, if all those buildings are sold, I ask another very big question. Is the primary use of them then, because they are designated in planning law as health facilities, are they then available, as Frank Dobson pointed out, to private healthcare interests to take them over? Or are they going to be sold on for luxury apartments selling for goodness knows what figure, whilst the students, whilst the uh, hospital services, whilst the community service and everything else are pushed into an ever smaller footprint of space. We are in danger of throwing away a very, very valuable public facility. 
I remember arguing in the 1970s when I was a union organiser in Newpy, and my old friend Mike is one of my colleagues, is here tonight, against the closure and sell-off of inner London schools. And they said, well, the population's falling, we don't need these schools, we can get the income in from them, so on and so on. We beat them off on that, and every one of those schools is now full as the population begins to rise. Think ahead, don't think short term by selling off these buildings and what goes with it. And so I'm here to say, and I've had this from many people in my constituency and our community, to those that want to put this for plan forward. Stop, halt, think, meet, talk and listen. There's expertise in this room, there's expertise in the overflow room, there's expertise all around the community who really love and value their local health service. They have good ideas, they have great intelligence, they want that voice to be heard. The National Health Service was built by people with a vision. It will be defended by people with a vision. Don't think inside an envelope imposed upon you by Jeremy Hunt or anybody else. Think inside and outside an envelope of what you want in a decent, civilised society of a universal health care, free at the point of use, not something that the vultures circle to buy the property of, to take over the services of, and ultimately to destroy and give us the kind of private healthcare system that costs the earth and provides so little to all the poor people of the United States. That is the alternative. Don't accept it. Stand for our NHS. Thank you.